Thanks for calling. Yes, sir. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. Boy, it's a long day for me, folks. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, this is Mike in uh, Florida. Hello, Mike. Uh, I don't know if anyone caught this, but uh, the, the fact is, it took them a long time to come up with uh, a casualty account. On, well, on they're the they're plane. not they're not going to have a complete casualty account for days. Well. You know, don't you think that's awful strange? That plane, to me, looked like a drone. Uh... Yeah, I, I know, but uh, uh, apparently these, all four of these planes were hijacked and had passengers on them. Yeah, I know that's what they reported, but the, the thing is, is they could have come up with that manifest within an hour. They never did until later in the day. Well, sometimes they won't. Like, it took a long time for them to come out with the casualties from TWA Flight 800 and other planes that uh, that have crashed. Lockerbie, it was, you know, it was days before we got any list of casualties from that airplane. Okay, I just wanted to put that input in so, there. So it's not unusual Thank uh, you. to take a long time to come out with the list of people who died in a plane crash. Thanks for calling. 520-333-4578 is the number. That's not unusual at all. Um, for whatever reason, sometimes it takes a while. Maybe it's just to make sure that they're not releasing somebody's name who maybe wasn't on the plane. Sometimes somebody books a ticket and they, they never get on. Good evening. You're on the air. Uh, Bill, it's Paul from Ohio. Hi, Paul. Yeah, I was, uh, I was tuned in late to the program, and I was uh, hearing about, you know, I guess you're asking about why the building collapsed the way it did or whatnot. The, the third building and, yeah, and, yeah. The, and the Marriott. We don't know why they collapsed. Yeah, I just, uh, I've, I don't have an overview of, you know, the layout, how the building is set up, but it, from what I've seen, it looks like, uh, you know, the one side, the opposite side, they, they show a good side of the building, and you can tell the opposite side of the building is, you know, sort of caving in, you know, and mm -hmm. everything is following in, and I think maybe just, you know, you know, the debris from the other buildings and, you know, weakening the foundation and underground. Uh, that could be. That was my first suspicion. And I asked, I asked if uh, any part of the other buildings had fallen on it, and Bart said no. He, he didn't believe that, uh, that it did. And then later we, uh, somebody called and said that they were watching, I believe it was ABC, and, uh, and they said that uh, a part of one of the large towers that fell had fallen on this third building. But then we have also a report that the Marriott Hotel collapsed. Yeah, they, uh, I think that would be helpful if some of the news programs showed an overview and uh, you know, just an aerial view of what happened. You know, we're just seeing the ground view and side views. And uh, I think on a related note, I'm a, you know, I'm a aircraft mechanic for uh, one of the uh, uh, cargo carriers, and uh, you know, I've got. They told me not to come into work tonight, and. I used to work for a passenger airline and uh, one of the major ones, and that the uh, security there at the airports are a joke. You know, just uh, I, you, you could see how they could get knives or guns on the aircraft uh, through the uh, people who service the aircraft, and uh, so I could see how they got control of one of them aircraft like that. Well, they got control of four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, four. I, they could have done more. You know, that's how stupid the security is. You know, and. The, well, there must be something uh, haywire because uh, you know every time I've been to an airport since they instituted all this stuff, uh, um, you know it was a it was a tremendous inconvenience and an insult to me to have to go through uh, just you know all that yeah. that stuff. And of course, I wear a prosthesis, so I always set off the alarm. And they always want me to go over to the side and wave that magic wand around, and I want to stick it, you know, where the sun don't shine. Yeah. <laughs> what I want to do with their magic wand, and uh, you know, it could be embarrassing sometimes. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm talking specifically, like, uh, you know, while the aircraft's at the the gates there, uh, you know, the people, you know, the back, you know, going to the back door approach there. You know, I don't want to go into details about it, but they. Uh, like I said, you know, they, they put the passengers through uh, hell, you know, through security measures, it seems like. Yeah, but no, but you're trying to tell me that nobody else has to go through that. Well, yeah, like, you know, people who put the beverage, service the beverages and food on the aircraft, they, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> they just they just drive in and do it? Uh, yeah, I mean, no one's, <laughs> no one's inspecting, you know, the 
no one's inspecting. Well, I, you know, I've suspected this for a long time. It's like yeah, a military. Yeah, very, you know, it's a, you know, I'm sure they have to have an ID to get on the airport, but after that, you know, it's, yeah. you know, no one's checking their clothing, you know, lump boxes, you know, it, it's it's a joke. It's like it's like uh, to to me, it's it it. Uh, well, I was in the military for a long. I was in the Air Force and the Navy, and security in the Air Force and the Navy is also a joke. Yeah. If uh, if if once you know about it. Uh, you could get in and blow anything up that you wanted to, and, yeah. and it, it's real simple. Uh, uh, although, although the military thinks they've got it locked up tighter than a drum, it's just not true. Um, uh, uh, you got time for a quick question? Go ahead. Uh, with uh, I've been here since 9:30 this morning. I guess I got plenty of time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, with the uh, you know now they're uh, pointing fingers at you know Ben Laden and his uh, associates. And, How do they know? Yeah, uh, I'm just saying. Uh, you know, I, I'm not questioning you. Yeah. I'm questioning them. How yeah, they, do they know? How yeah, can they make these accusations when they have no idea yeah. who did this? If they do, then that means that they knew about it before it happened. Yeah. Because there's no way that they could know that it was some particular individual after it happened when all of the people who perpetrated it are dead. Yeah. Unless they knew about it beforehand. Do they, do they have the technology to track down somebody like that? Uh, let me tell you, let me tell you, I don't believe in in they could tell me until their their noses turn purple that they've never known or been able to find Osama bin Laden and I don't believe it for one single instant I think they're lying yeah. uh because Fox News when they wanted to interview Osama bin Laden they just went right straight to him right now how does that happen yeah how's it do they how how could they even contact him yeah do they do and they, you're telling me that the entire intelligence structure of the United States government can't find the guy, and Fox News just waltzes right in. It seems to me he's like their uh, to- token boogeyman, you know. To well, they got to have one. Read yeah. uh, read the report from Iron Mountain, and you'll understand the whole concept of why they always have to have an enemy um, for the population to focus their anger on. Okay, well, I'll let you go and let someone else on. All right. All right, bye. Thanks for calling. Yeah, read the report from Iron Mountain, folks. <laughs> uh, you'll begin to understand. A lot more once you've read that uh, that little treatise. Good evening. You're on the air. Oh, okay. Finally got through. Um, yeah, I was talking with a guy this morning about how the buildings were coming down. Mm-hmm. This, this is just the towers. We didn't know about the other buildings then. And he was saying that uh, they were constructed as temporary structures. They're only supposed to last 100, maybe 150 years. Which which structures? The towers. The world. Well, that that's absolutely not true. Well, that's absolutely not true. I can tell you that for they were never built as tem- temporary structures. They were built as permanent structures. Well, it's and you can't build a building that high uh, that might be subject to uh, hurricane winds and crashes yeah, of airplanes right. and all kinds of things like that because as a temporary building. It, because it, of the metal fatigue and the tubular structure of it, that uh, it, it would cease to be safe after a certain number of years. Well, that could be absolutely true, but you, but they were never built to be temporary structures. Well, they yeah, were they were built it. to be strong and, and last for a certain number of years. Yeah, well, okay, but when I mean temporary, I mean a couple hundred years or something. Well, that's certainly not temporary yeah, in my book. I mean, temporary is like, you know, uh, maybe a year or it's something. It's not as permanent as the pyramids either. Well, of course not. Okay. But but he was saying that that, uh, that when they when they put it up they had an idea about how they were going to take it down, you know. And he's he's an engineer and I'm not, uh-huh. so I, I can't tell you much more than that. Yeah. Well, uh, I, but, I, I, I'm um, sure I'm sure that what he told you is it, it sounds uh, reasonable to me. Yeah. Um, that nothing, especially of that size, unless it was built like the pyramids, uh, could be expected to to, to last forever. Yeah. And uh, I can testify, because I've been up there at the top, uh, that just on a normal day, the top of that building swings back and forth. Yeah, and the, yeah, and the wind. <laughs> and it scared me. I mean, it was spooky. Yeah. It, it was spooky. And they've got a place where you can walk out, and it's like glass, real mm-hmm. thick glass, and you can look down. It's like you're standing on air. Yeah. And you can look right straight down at the street, right below your feet. And I'll tell you, um, that... Uh, I had to get off of there real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I chose not to go up myself. Uh, I had to get off of there real quick. Yeah. That that uh, really, really uh, 
was uh, was an experience that I did not like. Yeah, I got, I got another thing I wanted to talk about too was the cell phone calls from the the people.